Guess who's back? Back again. Jack is back and I'm back to run through Hollywood's movies of 2014. Here we go! Let's start things off with number 14 on the list. It's a really, really funny movie called Let's Be Cops. There's no, really no reason to justify this movie. I just loved it. Watched it twice this year. And it's really, really funny. I recommend everyone to go see it. And that's number 14 of the top 14 movies of 2014. On to number 13 on the list. And I cannot believe how funny it was. An animated movie being so funny as the Lego movie. It was really, really tremendous. And I love Batman in it. I love the main character. It was well put together. And it, and it was about time that you get a full feature Lego film. And I just loved it. Batman ruled the movie. What an awesome job they did on that movie. Now some might say that this year was the year of the comic book movies. And a bunch of them made it to the list, starting with number 12, Spider-Man 2, the amazing Spider-Man 2 that is with Andrew Garfield. I loved him as Peter Parker. He is a tremendous performer. Um, maybe some people didn't like the fact that Gwen Stacy had to die in this flick, but it was, I believe, a continuation, continuation of the comic book and then we will get MJ introduced later on in the franchise but you know those rumors about Sony canceling or maybe doing another remake or not going with the Sinister Six or bailing on a Andrew Garfield but who knows but for now The Amazing Spider-Man 2 deserved the cover of the 12th spot on the show. Now this movie Interstellar didn't really amaze me in terms of storytelling but I really love the cinematography behind this movie. The IMAX crystal clear imagery by Christopher Nolan was so awesome it blew my mind in IMAX I loved it and I'm not taking away anything from before the performers um, mainly uh, Matthew McConaughey who did a tremendous job but story-wise I did not like it and it only got on the show because of Christopher Nolan and his tremendous efforts into producing this kind of crystal clear images and I loved how he made it so realistic that we didn't even assume it was shot behind a green screen chroma keying or whatever. And speaking about being cinematographically awesome, um, The Ray 2 is another movie that had top-notch directing skills and it was one of the best action movies I've ever seen put together. The choreography but on its own was so so awesome. Love the storyline as well and I know it's an Indonesian movie but it also had a couple Americans working on it from the directors and whatnot. I really loved it and you have to watch it if you love action movies. It was really really tremendous and it was hardcore and it was so realistic even the actors themselves said that on some of the moves they actually connected with their performances so uh, wow I just hats off to those guys and I really really loved it so you guys must check it out at some point if you haven't already and with shocking turn of events from last year from being last year's worst movies they made a sequel and made it into my top 10 list number nine goes to the purge anarchy I love this kinds of movies I loved how they changed it they flipped it they have a guy who's going against the system well sort of and he was trying to use the purge to avenge and it turned out that there's this huge or this group of people who are going to go against the purge and hopefully they make a third part where they overcome those uh, power hungry people and it's a similar storyline to the Hunger Games uh, and Divergent which is the number eight on the list. Divergent was awesome I know these books keep popping up from nowhere and it's just a bit different than what we're used to. Divergent is awesome, I cannot wait for the sequel which hits theaters I believe in this coming March. Now number seven, I was torn apart between How to Train Your Dragon 2 and Big Hero 6. They both delivered in their own ways, they both touched emotionally all of us in the theater and I loved it so I couldn't really make a choice so I'm calling it a draw I know you have to make a choice or whatnot this wouldn't be the top 14 movies it would be the top 15 movies but I don't care because both of them were awesome and they both deserve 
the Kevin at seventh spot on the show. Now I said a bunch of comic book movies will be making it on the list, so let's get rid of that. Number six goes to Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a new feature in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so there's that. Number five goes to none other than Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. They just shut up all the haters of Captain America, the original one who said it was boring and whatnot or stale. Right now, Captain America is a huge thing. And number four on the list goes to the Wolverine, X-Men Days of Future Past. It was awesome. They did everything that was wrong in the franchise and they corrected it. It was really, really awesome. I really recommend all of those three movies. I love them. And um, Guardians of the Gal Galaxy was, wasn't taking itself that seriously. That was, that was why it was that successful, in my opinion. So that's why I recommend it. That's why I believe it was a success. And Captain America, as I said, it's improved. I loved uh, incorporating uh, the acro acrobatic moves to Captain America himself. And of course, X-Men, as I said, tremendous performances. They, we get to see um, people from the past and the present. It was really, really tremendous. And no one died, so they rewrote everything. And I cannot wait for Apocalypse. Seems like it's raining heavily, but I don't care. This is the extreme show and I'm taking it to the extreme. Now, before we go on and head to the top three movies of the year, I'm gonna go ahead and mention my honorable mentions who didn't make it to the top 14. I got Robocop, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, Bad Wars, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Dumb on number two was hilariously funny. Um, Nonstop and um, Transformers 4, Age of Extinction. And now here we go, the top three movies of 2014. This movie has been in production for the past decade. Boyhood, oh my god. The amount of energy and effort they put into this movie. And to watch a kid grow up from being a five-year-old to an 18-year-old, that journey that, that they took us on, it was really, really awesome. I love the kid. He was really, really awesome. Loved seeing every stage of his life and it gives you a different perspective on life. I really, really recommend it. It's uh, the number three on the list and I just can't believe they pulled it off. Now number two here is a sci-fi comedy action, which I never thought we would see, I guess. Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. It was awesome. and. The live, die, repeat was awesome. I love the whole angle on it. I know it's an ancient or an old manga or something. It's a comic book. They changed a few things from a comic, a comic book from what I understand, but I loved it. And boy, Tom Cruise just delivers. This guy delivers. I just loved it. Edge of Tomorrow, you gotta see it if you haven't seen it. Don't say that it's because sci-fi and edgy and has a stupid storyline, whatever. Go see it for yourself and you will love the tagline, live, die repeat getting wetter and wetter but number one goes to your favorite movie of the year everyone's favorite movie of the year gone so i will look for you i will find you and i will kill you no okay okay fine fine Number one goes to Denzel Washington's The Equalizer. So thanks for watching. The Equalizer takes it home. Denzel Washington loved your performance, man. Love the storyline. Love the man who does not stand for evil and makes things wrong or makes things right, excuse me, by his own way. I'm gonna get sick for this or something. I don't know, I love it. Love you guys and I'm glad that I'm back. And now check out the worst top five movies or something of the year, six movies, I don't know. We'll check that out. Click on my face, click anywhere here or down below. Check out the worst movies of 2014. I'm out and I'll be seeing you in the upcoming video. Peace.